morning. My name is Nikki Hobby, and this is our team, and we represent Mississippi College in Clinton, Mississippi. And I'd like to start off by showing you the market profile of Chicago Bridge and Iron, or CB&I, as we'll be referring to it. Some key notes is that the earnings per share is 2.87, and the return on equity is 21.32%. Now, we recommend a buy based on our one-year target price of $63.07. CB&I provides services for the in energy industry, such as coal, um, provided by coal, water, hydro hydrocarbon, and nuclear. CB&I is separated into three segments. The first is Lumis Technology, Project Engineering and Construction, which is their largest segment, and Steel Paint Structures. Over the next year, CB&I will have uh, a lot going on because of its acquisition with Shaw. Shaw is a Louisiana-based company. Its market cap is $3 billion, and its revenue is $6 billion. The two largest segments in Shaw is its uh, power segment and its fabrication and manufacturing segment. These segments will actually bring a larger market base to CB&I because it provides some of the same services um, that CB&I provides. But with acquisition comes opportunities and new services. One of these new services is plant services. This is the maintenance um, of energy plants. And we believe this is important because it's counter cyclical. We believe that when investments on these energy plants are low, maintenance will still be required. Another service that will be made to them is their um, environmental and infrastructure. This provides services to uh, the disaster recovery and energy response. Shaw's uh, big customer is FEMA. And in the past, Shaw has responded to such events as Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Rita, the oil spill, and uh, the tsunami in Japan. Now I would like to hand it over to Captain Cooley, who will discuss the strengths, weaknesses, and economic factors. First, I want to go with the strengths of CBI. One of the strengths of CBI is the fact that it is focused in the energy infrastructure construction. Unlike the uh, um, competitors who are also focused in um, construction in the commercial and industrial industry, um, which had strained their profits due to the recent recession. Due to this, CBI has been able to maintain lower cost of sales and um, operating expenses, as you can see in the table here. Um, another strength is the fact that they have qualified workers who are have considerable skills which is very important in their industry. Also, they are vertically integrated, which is important for their large um, projects, which they are able to do all extensions of the project. And they're also horizontally integrated acquisition of Shaw. Um, although they have many strengths, they also have weaknesses. Um, an example of this is the fact that CBI has been trending towards more cost reimbursable contracts, which is less profitable than their base um, price contracts, due to the fact that it gives consumers more negotiating power in the competitive industry. Another weakness is the fact that Shaw has um, greater costs of sales and operating expenses, um, which may temporarily affect the profit from CBI. So they're able to streamline Shaw. Now I'm going to talk about the macroeconomic factors of CBI. In 2011, we saw GDP growth in the top four contributors to CBI. We also saw growth in the production and consumption of coal, natural gas, energy, and nuclear power. Um, however, we did see a sluggish growth in the production and consumption of um, the oil products, I mean the gas. Um, and we also expect that by the year 2000, 35 that we will have a world consumption growth of 49 percent. Now that I've discussed the strengths and weaknesses and our economic factors, I'm going to hand it over to Hannah Hurt to discuss the industry of The industry of the for CBI has very exciting growth, growth potential for their four main countries they operate in, the U.S., Colombia, Canada, and Papua New Guinea. In the U.S., the deregulation of the natural gas industry has allowed for growth in the supply of natural gas. By, um, throughout 2015, um, the natural, um, the energy infrastructures in America are supposed to increase by approximately 4% each year. Colombia is a top leader in Latin America in the oil sector. Um, furthermore, there are supposed to be significant investments in the oil and gas explorations in Colombia. Canada. Um, Canada is resuming the oil sands projects that they halted in 2009. Additionally, Canada is looking to heavily invest 
in the natural gas and oil sectors by 2013 or in 2013. Um, Papua New Guinea is forecast a large growth in the natural gas and oil sectors, um, in the hydrocarbon sectors. Ongoing exploration ventures in active petroleum systems in the Gulf near Papua New Guinea is would provide um, opportunities for growth. Globally, CDNI um, also has positive outlooks because they have upper trends in the natural gas and coal industries. However, they should be concerned about the political and economic instability in developing countries that they have operations in. Also, CDNI should be concerned with their high concentration in certain geographical regions and in certain customers where they have linked multi-million dollar um, projects. Now I'm going to turn it over to Molly Dearmore, which will explain our evaluation of CDNI. So I'll tell you how we arrived to our target price of $63.07. And we arrived to this number by our pro forma income statements at December 31st of 2013. And the first consideration was the growth rate. We looked at the historic performance first, and we saw that during the recession, as you can see, after having three years of very uh, incredible growth, they were hurt by the recession. However, they came back after it with a growth of 25% in 2011, and based on the performance so far, the third quarter of 2012, we expect a growth of 20%. Therefore, we felt um, comfortable of using the weighted average of the growth rate for the last 10 years, giving more weight to the most recent years because they reflect today's economic environment um, after the recession. The second consideration um, was the cost of sales and the operating expenses. Well, actually, I go back here. So we arrived at a growth rate of 19.60%, and we apply that to CV and ICE revenues first. And then we added Shell's revenues. Now to those revenues, it was tricky because first of all, there was no growth. They, were, they had almost flat growth for the last reporting year, 1%, but they are also selling a segment, which is their segment of energy and chemicals, as part of the requirements for the acquisition. And that segment represents 10% of the revenues. So we decreased the revenue by 10%. With those two revenues combined, we go to our cost of revenues and our operating expenses. Those, we had to increase them, taking into consideration all the projects that Shaw is bringing and because they have a higher operating expense and cost of sales than the ones that CB and I had before. Now, for the other lines of our performance income statement, we maintain them, such as the tax rate and the interest expense, because we do not expect debt to go up with the acquisition. First of all, Shaw has to maintain a, medium, a maximum debt of $100 million, and then for the acquisition, they're actually going to use the cash, which Shaw is holding large amounts of cash, as well as CDNI. Then the $1 billion that we're estimating they're going to have in debt would actually be offset, we believe, by some of the corporate ex overhead that Shaw carries, which is like $70 million. And we expect if they streamlined it, by only 25 million, they would be able to cover the interest expense. We arrived at our net income, estimated net income, and then we divided that by the shares outstanding at that time. For those shares, we had CBNI shares, we utilized CBNI shares outstanding at the third part of 2012, and we also added Shaw's share at that time. And then we utilized the price to earnings multiples, which was the current price to earnings multiple at the time of the valuation. Now, we're being conservative in two ways. First of all, we think the shares outstanding are going to decrease because CDNI has been repurchasing large amounts of stock. So we believe that will increase the earnings per share. And the other way in which we're being conservative is through the price to earnings multiple. We believe that will only grow because of the growth outlook that CDNI has now with Shaw's acquisition. And with that, we finish our coverage with a strong buyer recommendation based on a price of $63.07 and an appreciation of 25.7% in a year. Thank you. Did you do a discount of the cash flow? We did. 
we actually um, utilize cash flows based on the formulated statements, and um, with that analysis, we uh, determined that the stock price was at the time of the valuation undervalued because we came up with a fifty-three dollar price. Now, because that's at this moment in time, we know that the price has increased in the last week, so we actually hit on the price with that cash flow discount model. But for our target price, we decided to use a performance statement. So, how many years did you forecast with your discount cash flow analysis? How many years of forecast did you develop? How well, you yeah, we actually forecasted to infinity because we applied. Um, greater growth to the, to the most recent years, like we did 25%, 24%, 23%, 20% to the, to the next five year range. And then we actually dropped it drastically to be conservative to 5%. And because we think that because of the profitability in the industry, it might, the, the, the profits might decline. And then we came up to that. We utilized the discounted cash flow model and we came up with that valuation. So we know that we could have softened the drop in the growth, but we think that it wouldn't change much. So we just did like a lot of growth in the beginning years and reduced growth in the next years. How many years of historical data you use for your estimation? And did you take into consideration uh, the global financial crisis, uh, yes. 2007 through 2009, into your calculation? And yes. We actually used 10 years, and that's what softened the growth rate because they had great growth rate before the recession. Then during the recession, they dropped. Then after the recession, it was contained growth. So we first calculated just an average growth rate of the last 10 years, and then we decided to do a weighted average growth in which we placed more weight to the last two years because we believe it's not likely that we're going to go into another recession. But it's not likely either that we're going to see in the next year the incredible growth they had in the three years before the recession. Uh, part of your analysis includes the acquisition of Shaw. How likely or how well is the CBI position to take advantage of that acquisition? Has uh, CBI shown the ability to integrate that position successfully? You know, we didn't look into other acquisitions that they've gone through, but we believe because they have so many uh, services that they provide different se segments and because they complement each other very well, we believe that they will be able to pull it off successfully, especially because the services are so similar. And we accounted for the fact that they might not be able to streamline that fast. That there may be bumps along the way because we know that it's a larger position of the projects that Shaw brings in are going to be the same projects. They're not going to be able to cut those costs. So we think that we're actually conservative because we raise the cost of sales and the operating expenses for all of the revenues, not only for Shaw's revenues. But we thought we would be on the, on the safe side there. Where do you view those synergies to be? I'm sorry? Where do you view those synergies to be, like in what particular areas of your business? Um, do you want to say that? Uh, synergies? Yeah. Um, For the combined business, oh. the opportunities and mm -hmm. problems or challenges. Um, well, they have very similar services, which what um, for our research they claim to do is they just claim to combine them and have a larger customer base. But there are some things, they complement each other very well. There are some things that Shaw does that maybe CBI can't do, such as their um, emergency response, um, their maintenance. Um, I think Shaw um, builds some projects in-house versus CB and I would actually have to go on site and build those projects. So by acquiring Shaw, they can build these projects that they weren't able to do in-house and then ship them to um, the actual place. So they're very similar in the fact that they can draw Shaw's customers in and they're 
going to be able to integrate very well, but also um, show off differences in their strengths happen to be what CB9 is lacking. So um, I think it's, it's a good and a good marriage between them. To add to that, the synergies specifically are the power segments and fabricating and manufacturing segments with their project and engineering and wellness technology segments. They basically are very focused on oil and natural gas and consulting and technology. So those are the those two segments combined with Lomas Technology because they do machinery and consulting and with project and engineering, which is the construction of their pipeline, which complements power, and fabricated manufacturing, which is the fabrication of pipeline. You also mentioned about the political risk of uh, having global operations. What are the other areas of risk? And, and, and did you do any risk management and, and risk management for the combined company before or after or anything in this regard? We did look at um, possible risk for the countries in which they mainly operate in, but overall we felt that they weren't significant enough as far as the how great of an effect they would have on the company overall to truly affect our evaluation. And also we looked at um, Regulations, um, like with pipelines, there's a lot of regulations on where you can build. Um, so with CB9 growing, obviously they're going to have um, different countries have different regulations. So they're going to have to adjust to what they need to do in those countries. You mentioned the different countries that currently are operating and what the growth potentials are. What other countries do you see you know, great opportunities for the company to then start building? Well, their presence is very strong in South America, and we identified incredible growth in Brazil, which is a booming economy and has been driven by the oil sector, and also in Bolivia and Peru. And so, because their governments are mostly stabilizing, like for example in Colombia, and that brings in investment. And they're also signing deals to supply natural gas within the region because they have a lot of natural gas and all that has been unexplored. So we believe because they're already in South America, they'll be able to take advantage of those opportunities. Now, um, how does CBI plan to fund acquisition of Shell? You, know, you, you talked a little bit about that, but I wasn't sure. Well, OK, the acquisition is $3.7 billion. What they're going to do is, that's it. What, what they value it at approximately. What um, CBNI is going to do is that they are going to, for every stockholder for Shaw, they're going to do a payout of $41 and 0.12 shares of CBNI. Therefore, they're going to have to issue approximately 8 million shares, and they're also going to have to give a cash payout. Now, the cash payout is estimated to be $2.7 billion. And we believe that's one of the reasons why they're holding large amounts of cash and they're requiring Shaw to, to hold large amounts of cash. The requirement is $800 million at the moment of the acquisition and they themselves are holding like $700 million in cash. So that's $1.7 billion that they're right off the bat could pay uh, as part of the stock, the buyout to Shaw's stockholders. And they normally, they've never held this amount of cash as they're holding right now. So we think that this is in preparation of that purchase. So we have 1.5 billion left. And one of the advantages that CBNI has right now is that they, are, they have no debt whatsoever. So we think they can actually tap into that debt source of fund. And we calculated, because of the interest rates that we have right now, for that um, interest expense, to do not exceed uh, $45 million. And so because in the past they have an $11 million interest expense on the debt that they were carrying, we maintained that one. And we came out to, well, their interest expense would be $25 million, which we believe would be offset by the corporate overhead that Shaw has that can be streamlined. So how much debt would be issued? How much debt? Yes. We think a billion. Okay, we have to wrap it up here. Thank you very much.